So I'm going to share my screen, bear with me a second. Boom. Right, so Tim's creative challenge. It's very, very short, people. It's very, very short, nothing too major. So I'm going to run with you a little task that I run for in workshops for, for kind of leadership groups to get them thinking a little bit creatively, get their minds ticking over. And I think that's always good on a Friday morning as it is in this country. Apologies for, uh, for everybody else. Um, Where's the clock gone? Right, so it's called the Alternative Uses Challenge. What you're going to be displayed for the next few minutes of time are a series of miscellaneous images retrieved from the internet. And we've got 30 seconds per item to, um, to list as many alternative uses as possible per item. I will pause and unshare my screen after each item to um, exchange all the unusual and funny alternative uses. So if everybody's clear, I'm going to skip slide to the first item and start 30 seconds. So your first item, for those of people who are unaware, it's a pair of headphones and your 30 seconds starts now. Alternative uses for headphones. I'll just waffle while you do this because otherwise it's weird for the video. Um, I did this the other day with um, a pair of earbuds, you know, the in-ear headphones to a, a leadership group of engineers. We've got 10 seconds left. Um, who came up with an alternative use of nipple covers. Not sure where his mind was, if I'm honest, but there we go. One second and stop. Brilliant. Going to unshare. Right, people, stick your hand up if you've got uh, an alternative use for headphones. Anybody? Nobody did it. Hannah York, shout it out. Um, I think it's because I've been exercising this morning, but you know those sort of grip things for doing arm muscles? Uh, yeah, you know? the eight is. Yeah. Man exercise thing. Yeah, Brilliant. Man exerciser. Awesome. Uh, Elisa, did you have a, a thing? I, I had a mini hanging basket. Mini hanging basket, good, yeah. <laughs> Elisa, only what did you have one? All the way from Seattle. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you go to the grocery store and you have too many plastic bags, you can put them. <sighs> that is quite good. <laughs> that could be good for circular economy stuff, Helen. I reckon. Did you put your hand up also? Mm -hmm. Um, it's a bit random, but cup holders. I just thought you'd have to dismantle them slightly, but maybe you could get a cup in the, you know, in the actual headphone bit. Yeah, you could probably. You put, that's not bad. Good start, people. Good start. Right, ready for number two. I'm going to share my screen again. Bear with me one second. Right, item number two is a bicycle tyre. A bicycle tyre, people. 30 seconds starting now. Alternative uses for a bicycle tyre. You can include the wheel if you want. I'm not super strict on the rules of this creative challenge. Halfway, mate, 15 seconds, people. 10 seconds left. Don't forget there's a bonus points for super unusual and making us laugh. Five seconds, three, two, one. And we're done, people. Okay, okay. Alternative uses of a bicycle tire slash wheel. Anyone, anyone? Go on, Elisa. Um, I sort of went artistic. You could put it on the wall and then clip photos oh, on right. it. And I like a nice frame. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Amanda, did you stick your hand up? I saw. Yeah, I was thinking we could cut it into um, smaller pieces and put them on the bottom of our shoes in the snow for grip. <laughs> no grips. <laughs> I like that. We're doing very circular stuff today. This is awesome. Anybody else? Steve Biggs from Hitchin. Yeah. How about a mirror? So if I spin this round. Oh. 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 Very good. Yeah. Tim, was, that a, was that a plant? 
<laughs> I was just saying, I, I, I hadn't known that before. Thank you very much. I presume Steve sells them now and can all upsell us on. <laughs> Stick an I, eBay I, link in there. I, I and, currently don't have a job, so thanks for the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Anybody else before we swap another item? Go on, Tom. I actually went shoe repair as well, so great minds and everything. Um, my granddad used to tell us how he used to do that with old car tires. Oh, yeah. Right, so he actually used to do that. Uh, and the actual bike wheel, I was like a frame for an umbrella. That would be good, actually. Yeah, nice people. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Right, third item coming up. Here we go. Get ready. Get your pens ready. A paintbrush. 30 seconds starts now for an alternative usage for a paintbrush, people. Well, that's a hard one. Mm. It depends if you've got no hair, because I could apply sun cream, moisturiser, fake tan. Pet grooming. It's soft enough to stroke like a tiny pet, like a fish or a hamster, maybe. It's been a been a long week, hasn't it? Right. Oh, oh, five seconds. Four, three, two, one, go. Right, stopping. Alternative uses for the tricky paintbrush. Anyone? Anyone? Go on, Carla. Mm. Uh, I would cut the bristles off and attach it to double-sided tape and have a fake mustache. Ah, very good. Very, very good. Who, who was next? It's what I've always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Elisa again? Um, so I'm also a painter. So um, I use paint brushes that are dried up and I spray them silver and I put them on a Christmas tree. Cool. Very nice. Very nice. Nice. Anybody else before we move on to the next one? No? Okay, cool. Pe oh, sorry, Anna. We'll, yeah, move, move, on. we'll move on. We'll move on. A penultimate item. This will be confusing for many who haven't been to Derby. This is a building called the Assembly Rooms, and it's kind of a big empty theatre. So alternative usage for a big old empty building or the Assembly Rooms for the Derby people. Go. 30 seconds. There's a whole backstory I won't bore you with about the Assembly Rooms in its current state. Um, about halfway, folks. Ten seconds left. Three, two, one. Stop sharing. A couple of couple of shout outs before the last one for alternate uses assembly rooms. Go on, Helen. Vertical Helen, farm. Indoor vertical, vertical farm. Oh. Nice. Very cool. That is very cool. Anybody else? Go on, Amanda. Um, well, we had a really good uh, celebration on our street for VE Day last Friday. And so I was thinking one big community tea party. Yeah, a big community tea party. Tea that party. would be a big one in there as well, Afternoon wouldn't it? tea, yeah. Cool. Okay, we're going to proceed to the last item. And it's a very special item and one close to heart in Peyton Morning Starby. I'd like alternative uses in 30 seconds for Mr. Rob Dawes. Carry on. <laughs> Mr. Rob Dawes, 30 seconds, alternative use is go. <laughs> For those who don't know who Rob Dawes is, he's our, um, the director of the company, who's our resident videographers. Um, inside joke, probably would have rethought that if I knew we'd have so many visitors from out the area. Halfway. But to, let you, is... to let you know, I'm not good at DIY. And things like that. <laughs> yeah. 10 seconds, five, four, Three, two, one, and we're done, people. Creative challenge done. So who's got an alternative use for Rob Dawes? Go on, Tom. You're muted. You're muted, Tom, you're muted. Hold on. Um, this might be a bit mean. I don't really know you, but uh, I put crime prevention, like stick that photo on things and it'll stop people from nicking them. He, look, he, he is very much like a security guard. <laughs> Anybody else? Go on, Helen. Vertical farmer. 
medical <laughs> farmer. Brilliant. That's good. That's good. I quite like to see him in, I don't know what they're called, but you know those uh, English guards at Buckingham Parish with the big furry Busby on? One of those. I think it'd be marvellous. Or beef eater. A beef eater would be good. Yeah, anything. Robin Hood, maybe. Oh, that's not a good minute. Sorry. Someone on the chat suggested I could be a homeless shelter. <laughs> that is good. That may have been the previous one. I, I mean, it could be both, sure, why not? Yeah. That's quite a good, a good sense of option. Sorry we ruined that with the Rob Dawes one, Jennifer. That was fine. Um, but now we're all in a creative, cheery mood. We've thought about Rob Dawes for longer than we should have, a little bit probably. So I'm just going to uh, reshare my screen and we'll push on. So all of it, we're, we're going to got a few announcements from our global partners for Creative Mornings that I'll do now. Um, and then we'll jump into the 30 second pitches, by which point Jenny should have arrived for the main talk. A bit more Rob Dawes, everybody. A few more seconds. I'll just leave that there for a few seconds. There we go. Welcome, everybody, to Creative Mornings. If you've not been to a Creative Morning, I think everybody's been to a Creative Mornings, at least virtually, maybe, maybe not. But welcome to a Creative Morning. We are Creative Mornings Derby, although we've gone multinational today. Um, creative Mornings is a global movement. It's a breakfast lecture series for the creative people of 215 cities across 67 countries. We get about 20,000 people like us every month attending events like this. Um, there's 8,000 talks online of which we're one and 9.1 million video views Rob is up to now for the Creative Morning videos, which is amazing. Well done Rob and his team at Future Proof. Um, so we've got some messages, bear with me while I read them off the screen off my phone. So we can't do this without a bunch of support from good companies. One of those companies is MailChimp. So I've got a message from MailChimp. Let's face it, things are far from business as usual. On the podcast, Call Paul, Paul Jarvis has thought of thoughtful conversations with small business owners and entrepreneurs negotiating the economic realities of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the MailChimp have put a link to the podcast and that episode could be useful for people like us. I will paste that in the chat in a second. We've got next up is WordPress, our next global partner who pretty much power the internet. Their message is, we're building, if you're building a new website or long, want to learn how to bring your work into a digital space, you can join one of WordPress.com's free live 30 minute webinars held each day, Monday to Friday. And we've got a link that I'll post in the chat that have got loads of really useful webinars about starting selling online, building a website, blogging, all that sort of stuff. And that's from WordPress for our Creative Mornings community. Next up is our newbie. Just, it was in March, Basecamp joined as a, a global partner. Um, unfortunate timing for them, bless them. Uh, but also strategically placed because they're a remote work platform if you've not heard of Basecamp. And Basecamp say remote work is all about communication. You can apply what you read in Basecamp's internal communications guide that I'll post in the chat in a second and you'll be communicating 99% better of any other teams. For all you with staff or colleagues or teams, we will post that in the chat in a second. And we've also got we, couldn't, we literally couldn't do Creative Morning Starby without our local partners. We've got Mainframe back in the house, off planet furlough. Hannah and Charlene, give us a wave. Hannah and Charlene. Woo! Hannah and Charlene. Um, Hannah will tell you about Mainframe in a second. And possibly Quad. Quad is usually our venue. So for those of you out of Derby, um, Quad is a cinema, an art gallery, and a cafe, and an all-round creative experience right in the Market Square of Derby. And it's a, it's a lovely venue. We couldn't ask for anything better. We held it in the cafe, and there's many, many items for breakfast at every Creative Mornings, which is fabulous. And then we've got Future Proof Phones, represented by Rob Dawes in the hat. Rob Dawes. Uh, Rob and his team were very lucky to have uh, record all of our videos for Creative Mornings, all of our talks, and they do a marvellous job. So thank you very much, Rob. And then we've got Essential Print. I believe I saw Yvonne's little icon in there somewhere. Essential Print Services does what it says on the tin. They do your Essential Print Services. 
And if we were in um, our venue, you would see them in the form of beautiful flyers and pop-up banners that Yvonne has done for us. So we're entering the time now, folks, where it's 30 second pitch time. So I'm going to unshare my screen. We have a list of people who have pre-opted in to uh, talk to us about lightning pitches. So let me share my screen. First up, we have Miss Hannah York from Mainframe. Do you want to uh, take over yeah. the mic, Hannah? I uh, will do, thank you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to remind you that although uh, Mainframe has had a little gap on furlough, uh, we are back, uh, myself and Charlene. Um, we are here to help you, support you, um, provide as much information as we can. We're part of a wider um, partnership called The Big House. And now The Big House is doing everything it can to take as many of its activities online as possible to keep you guys kind of supported, to keep um, a sense of business as usual from us in terms of events, workshops, uh, mentoring, support. Um, there's a, a wealth of things. So I will. I can't multitask, so I can't write it in there and talk at the same time. Um, but I will uh, remind you of the Big House um, details and the link to the events page. There's a, it's all for free and there's tons going on. So um, go and have a look at that. It is well worth it because there's a massive amount of things going on. Um, those of you who are part, already part of our mainframe community, you'll see this week, um, both on social and through the newsletter, that we've put together um, an impact survey what we're trying to do is help um, our kind of leaders of our creative community and wider community um, as they try and work out a regeneration plan uh, for Derby and what they really need is data. So um, we've created a little impact survey, it's 19 questions, um, super quick about uh, the impact of COVID-19 today on your uh, business. Um, everything from whether you're um, uh, one man doing their own thing, one person doing their own thing, um, through to a large business who's perhaps had to furlough people or um, even a business that's had to, to close its doors. All that information is really useful. So again, I will share the link to that survey. The more of those that we can get back, the better picture we can have and the better that the powers that be can kind of, if you like, argue the corner um, for creative businesses um, in Derby um, and Derbyshire going forward. So I think that's me. Brilliant. Thanks, Hannah. So I've just um, posted all the links from the global partners in the group chat and, and one to Helen privately. Sorry about that, Helen. Um, so next up we had Stephen Barker, but I don't think he's here. Stephen Barker, I can't see on the line from the CQ, so we'll move over. So Tom, do you want to take the mark? If you want to unmute again, buddy. Terrible for that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Baker. I'm a graphic designer in Derby. Um, like Alyssa, I was made unemployed at the beginning of the year, um, completely unrelated to COVID-19. Um, found a bit of work and then COVID-19 happened, so then lost that. So currently I am still looking for work, but occupying myself by creating my new website in WordPress, little sponsor thing there and um, so www.tombaker with a h because i share a name with a doctor who and it's a nightmare dot work uh and yeah have a look at my work uh put me in touch with anyone who might be able to help me if i can help you that would also be great and uh to make it relevant my other current project that i'm doing is rewilding my lawn so my nice trying to get as many species into my lawn as possible. And it's, it's weird and fun. So there you go. Brilliant, Tom. Thank you very much. Feel free to put your website in the chat, my friend. Uh, cool. Vicky, Vicky Flip Flop, there you are. Do you want to unmute yourself, Vicky? Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Vicky Flip Flop. Um, I have that name because I'm a travel blogger at vickyflipfloptravels.com. And I'm originally from Derbyshire, then travelled the world for years. And now I'm actually in Portsmouth, but I'm friends with Jenny through the blogging world. So yeah, I thought this sounded like a good chat to join. And yesterday I just launched my new site, which is called dayoutinengland.com because my travel blog, Vicky Flip Flop Travels is all about the world, but obviously the world's got a bit smaller. So now I'm focusing on travel in England. So yeah, dayoutinengland.com. I don't actually have 
Derbyshire yet, which is a crime. So I need to get on that straight away. Sorry, everyone. Um, but yeah, check it out. Brilliant. Pop it in the in the in the chat, Vicky. Uh, Helen Taylor, our last thirty second pitches before we hit Jenny Lothrop. Oh, unmute, unmute, Helen, unmute, unmute. I've got a landscape architecture practice that I started in 2012, but I furloughed myself from it to give me some time to work on the next thing that I want to do. And I've just um, written a brief for a master's student to help me take my idea, which is to help um, SMEs embed sustainability and have a low carbon approach onto some kind of online uh, platform to make it a toolkit that's accessible. Um, both financially and in, in terms of like the learning opportunities. So um, if anyone can help me with that, it's more of a, it's not a pitch like I'm selling this to you guys or I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I want to do, but um, I'm hoping for a master's student to do a six week placement with me virtually from the University of Nottingham because they've got that opportunity at the moment if anyone wants to look at that. But yeah, I need help to, to make it an online toolkit. So please share. Okay, cool. Thanks very much, Helen. What we'll do, we'll, we'll if you message me or I'll, I'll connect with you outside of here and we'll, we'll share it on the newsletter and stuff as well because there, there's more people in the ether, I think, for you. Right, folks. So Jenny Lothrop is back on the screen replacing her little whiteboard. So hey. I shall... Hey, Jenny. Hey, hey, hey. So I'll just introduce this month's topic and share my screen. Then I'll unshare. And Jenny, you can take over. One second. Can everybody see that? Thumbs up. Yeah. Um, so nature, we're going to talk a bit about nature and what we can learn from nature today. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me to start with. Um, I'm Jen. I'm a certified happiness trainer. I'm a blogger um, and digital consultant. Um, I run the business Feel Good Do Good where uh, it's all about helping people feel good, um, which in turn makes them do more good in the world which in turn makes people feel good again, a nice happy cycle. So that includes, um, yeah, happiness training, uh, productivity stuff, uh, agile working, which I do believe makes us all happier, um, and lots of other things as well. I'm also a trustee for the Peak District National Park Foundation, which is a new charity that started just over a year ago. Um, we're here to support and look after um, our beautiful national park, which I live just on the edge of. Um, I grew up in um, the Peak District um, and alongside my mum lived in the Peak District and my dad lived in this amazing house which you can see in the picture here. Um, it's called Hill Hot Wood and he sold it sadly a couple of years ago um, but my dad actually built this house, um, dug that lake um, and uh, lived in it for 20, well 10 years of getting planning permission living in a caravan in the middle of a wood and 10 years of um, living in it once it was built. And it really was the most incredible place to grow up in. Um, it was completely off grid. The only external power we had was um, a phone line and the internet, it's very important. Um, <clears throat> but that was it. The rest, we collected our own rainwater. It had wind turbines, photovoltaics, earth toilets, which was always a bit of a shock when friends came to visit. Um, and the little boathouse you see in the corner, that was my room um, and my little boathouse, which was a tiny little room in the upstairs where um, I would sleep. Um, so I've certainly grown up in the outdoors and I've grown up with a dad who um, has always cared for it and loved for it. Um, one of my first memories of when I knew how important nature was to me was when I was about um, six years old. And um, I was sat at the dining table at school um, and I announced to the table, when I grow up, I want to be a naturist, um, which uh, got a few giggles. And then one of the smarty bum boys on the table told me what a naturist actually was, to which I was completely mortified and didn't live that down for quite some time as a six year old child, um, but quickly learnt there is a difference between a naturist and a naturalist. Um, so yes, don't want to be a naturist. Um, got my clothes on today, so it's it's all okay. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about why, uh, what we can learn from nature. But I just want to start by a bit of a background. I've always loved it. It's always been a big part of my life. There's certainly been moments where I disappeared. I went to London for a while and lived in the big city. 
but I probably escaped it way more than most coming home almost every weekend um, or traveling to other places to explore. Um, I write a couple of blogs, she gets around and my new blog, they stay at home, quite the antithesis and the opposite. Um, so do check them out if you're interested. Um, so save the NHS, nature's health service. Um, nature's a part of all of us. It's so important to our life. Um, I'd almost argue that it's more, import more important than the NHS that we all clap for on a Thursday night. It's the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's the air that we breathe. Um, it's so, so important to us, yet somehow I think over the years we've kind of forgotten that. Um, without nature, we literally can't breathe. We can't eat. Um, uh, but I think certainly in lockdown, uh, nature, we've all started to appreciate it a little bit more. Um, I know that I've started to explore new walks in Matlock where I live um, and found new places that are literally kind of a 20 minute walk from my house that I hadn't actually walked to before. Um, because we are kind of, we do generally get in the car or get on a plane or get on a train to go somewhere exciting and find something new <clears throat> when actually there's loads right on our doorstep. <clears throat> so, what can we learn from nature? Nature is patient. If you watch my little mini 15 second clip I sent to uh, Tim, I shared this quote from Wal Rolf Waldo Emerson, adopt the pace of nature, her secret is patience. And I think that's something that all of us have learned over the last few weeks is patience. Um, we've been at home, we've had to slow down, apart from maybe this morning when I'm running up and down the stairs. Um, we've, uh, we, we're not running around the country, running around the world, running to meetings, jumping in our car, jumping on a train. Everything's slowed down. And I'm not saying in any way that this is a good situation, but I think we've probably all secretly found a few little positives in it. Um, I know I certainly have. Um, we've been living in a world where we expect everything instantly with the digital world, with everything on our phones. We just constantly want, want it now. We start a new business and we expect it to be successful straight away because we read all these stories of people that are overnight successes. It doesn't happen. No one's an overnight success. They've actually been probably beavering, beavering away um, behind the scenes for a very long time. Or maybe they've had a couple of businesses that failed before they had one that was a success. We have to be patient, slow and steady wins the race. Um, and also when I, yesterday I did a productivity workshop for the big house and um, my number one tip for uh, being productive is to rest. And it sounds counterintuitive, but when we're working at full pelt, it's not sustainable. Sometimes we really need to learn to stop and rest and look at nature. Like we look out at the trees, it takes years and years for them to grow. We put some seeds in to plant a potato and it'll take six months or more for that to come through or maybe it's three years before a flower actually comes out of a plant that we've um that we've uh, planted um nature's slow it's patient it's and i really think it's something that we can learn um from it number two nature is connected um the birds and the bees is kind of the typical one that we talk about all the time um, one can't live without the other. Uh, we think of when a tree dies and it falls on the forest floor and then bugs and insects will feed off it. It will go into the soil and it will help um, future trees and plants to grow. Um, a, a cow shits in a field and the flies will feed off that for weeks. It's all, nature is all connected and so are we. Um, when I do my happiness training, um, the number one thing is relationships. They're so important to us. And I know right now that we've been struggling, not being able to see our family, not being able to give our friends a big hug. Um, and it is hard because we're, we're programmed to connect to people. We're programmed to, to hug people and, have, and, and be close and talk to people. Um, but this is working too. As I said at the start, I really do feel like I've become a little bit more connected to some of my kind of Derbyshire community. Um, out there um but we're also connected to nature and if we don't look after nature um we can't survive um i mean right from that beginning of we need it to to breathe we need it for so much of what we do and um we've also realized over the last few weeks how much we need it for our mental health 
we really do we need to be walking um in the fresh air looking up at the trees um we're connected to nature as much as it's connected to each other as much as it's connected to us um <coughs> Uh, also, uh, when I was doing some research for this talk, I did actually find out that there is a um, nature, connectedness, nature Connectedness Research Group in Derby, um, at Derby University, um, which I only just found out a few days ago, but um, I'm going to read up on them. They're actually researching into that connection of us and nature. Um, and it's also kind of the future of uh, tech developments. A lot of tech is learning from nature. We, we learn a lot from... Um, beehives from there's so much in nature that we learn from that actually helps our industries um in the world as well it's so exceptionally connect um clever um that we're learning a lot in that way too so do look up the nature connectedness research group i think it's called at derby university because they're doing some really interesting research about how we're connected to, to nature the importance of nature for our mental health um <coughs> excuse me I developed a cough this morning. Uh -oh. <coughs> um, nature is aware. I've got a picture of a bear here because I learned um, last week that a bear's sense of smell is 2,100 times our sense of smell, which is slightly terrifying if you live near bears. Um, <laughs> but different creatures are amazing how they've evolved certain senses. I mean, there's flowers that um, turn in the sunshine um, towards the sun. Um, there's, there's so many different examples of, I think, is it, um, is it dolphins or whales that can hear for miles and miles? Um, yeah, it's amazing how certain animals have developed their senses. Um, and I think it's something that we've almost forgotten about, not forgotten about our senses, but um, maybe forgotten at, at how much we can use them and how important they are. Um, and I think that's something that nature, again, can really help us. So next time you go outside, um, use all your five senses, even if you're just tasting the air, um, looking really closely at the plants, feeling the bark, whatever it might be, it really does heighten our senses, which can actually heighten our creativity. It can, it can have so many um, knock-on effects that can really benefit our work and life. Um, lots of you have probably heard of uh, forest bathing, um, the latest craze that I think has come, I think it's from Japan. Um, and it's not just about walking through a forest and enjoying the forest. It's about walking really slowly in and around that forest and using those five senses to really notice the nature around you. I mean, yes, we go for walks and we enjoy looking at the trees, but how often do you really stop and think and use each of those? Really listen, really look, really smell. Um, and it can help us in other parts of life um, as well. Um, nature is resilient. Um, it's amazing how nature can spring back, spring back from uh, different traumas and problems. Um, this is just one example of a plant growing through the tarmac. Um, there's a walk that I've been doing regularly along the river in Matlock um, and there's a really big wall um, and the top of it is the road in Sainsbury's if you know Matlock. Um, and there's trees and plants growing out this wall, like quite big trees growing out the wall. And it's just amazing how they've learned to grow in that situation. Um, you see trees that have kind of grown in between cracks in a rock and clinging onto the edge of a rock and all sorts of things. Um, and when you really start looking, when you're walking along, even if you're in a city, you can find nature in places that you wouldn't expect. Look on the side of the road and you might see this beautiful flower that may well be a weed, but it might still be beautiful and it's grown on the side of this road in the middle of a big city. Um, it really is resilient. Um, look at Chernobyl. Chernobyl, such a horrendous disaster, um, but now you can see how nature is coming back. There's deer there, there's foxes, there's plants, there's trees, there's all sorts that's growing back in Chernobyl. Um, and something, we all need to be resilient, and I think this has taught us to be resilient. Um, we are going to spring back from this time. We are going to grow from it. We are learning from it. 
um, and we'll maybe we'll be better for it in the end. Like I'm not, I don't wish this had happened, but we can learn from it and we will get through it and we will be stronger for it. Um, yeah, and, and there's certain businesses that might even thrive in a crisis. I mean, even I only came for the last few minutes and there's um, already a couple of people that have set up new things since this has happened. They're redirecting their business. They're pivoting, which is, seems to be the word of the year, I think. We're all pivoting in our business. Um, so we really can, we are resilient and we'll get through this and maybe we'll have learnt um, over this time what's really, really important to us and we'll be focusing on that. Um, Phil, my coach, is on here. I've seen. I can't see you right now because I can only see five people on the screen. Um, but it's something I've been talking about with my coach and I've got a bit more time right now, um, which is great. And Phil and I have a fab chat next week booked in um, where we're going to... Um, Phil's going to be helping me through what it is that I really enjoy and what, what is it that I'm really about. I've got all these different things spinning, but you know, this is the time for us to focus on what is important to us. What direction do we want our businesses to go? What is the future of our business and ourselves? Um, <clears throat> nature is fragile. Um, it's resilient, but it's fragile and we're all fragile and we all have to look after nature and look after ourselves. Um, this is a picture of the uh, peaked moorlands in the Peak District. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm a, uh, uh, the Chair of Trustees for the Peak District National Park Foundation. And we're there to support and look after our national park. And I sometimes get people ask me, why did I choose to do something for the Peak District um, rather than um, becoming a trustee for a, I don't know, a, uh, save the children or, or something a bit more you know children is the um all humans basically I'm, I'm here looking after the natural environment why don't i want to be a charity of something that's more worthy than um putting a few flowers in a in a peak bog um on the top of a hill in the peak district um but this is where we really are connected and this is just as important as anything else because without it we can't live. It's the, it's the number one importance and that's why I really strongly support it. This shows the difference of um, a few years since they've started, um, they've started adding uh, more peat and looking after the peat on these moorlands. This was largely damaged by the Industrial Revolution, so it was humans that damaged it in the first place, so now it's humans that are having to put it back together. Um, and you think, oh well, you know, yeah, I guess it's a bit prettier, but it does so much more than that. Peat stores um, huge amounts of carbon, which uh, ultimately helps climate change. Um, it helps bring clean drinking water to us. In fact, I think it's 70% of drinking water in the UK comes from peat bogs like this around the country. Um, it's cleaning it and bringing it down as clean water. Um, and it also helps reduce flooding. This project has cost millions of pounds. It's not something that we, we've, we're funding a weeny weeny part um but it was government funding and you think millions of pounds but i think those millions of pounds are worth it if it's going to help prevent some flooding bring clean water and hopefully slow down the effects of uh, of climate change um so nature is fragile and we have ruined it a lot um and we have to enjoy it and um be connected to it um this is just one of the projects that the peak district foundation supports we are ultimately about the people. We do a lot of work around accessibility, creating accessible paths so people in wheelchairs and can enjoy um, short walks um, in, the, in the middle of the Peak District. Um, we do things around mental health, so mental health walks for people, and also accessibility around getting people from, there's so many cities around um, the Peak District. It's one of the, uh, I think it's 20 million people live within an hour of the Peak District, which is more than any other national park in the country. Um, because we've got Manchester, we've got Nottingham, we've got Derby, we've got Sheffield, we've got Leicester, we've got so many places within an hour. Um, but so many people have never been. Um, so letting some people that might live in the inner city enjoy those benefits of nature, because we can all experience it. We can, we learn so much more about our connectedness to nature when we're in nature, so we're more likely to support it. We're more likely to want to support it and make those decisions in our life that are good for nature. Um, 
So, um, how can we look after nature? Um, donate to conservation charities. Tread carefully when we're out on walks. If it says to keep your dog on a lead, keep your dog on the lead. Um, and right now, still stay home and stay to those walks close by. Um, just before lockdown, the Peak District had one of its busiest days ever when everybody crazy went to the Peak District. It can't sustain hundreds of thousands of people coming every day. Um, so we have to respect it and enjoy the nature that's right on our doorstep right now because wherever you live, whether you're in the middle of Derby, somewhere else, I promise you there is so much to find. There's cute little fox cubs in your garden, there's plants on the side of the road, um, and we can learn so much from them all. Um, as a final little thing, um, if anybody wants to join me, um, I talk a lot in my happiness training about gratitude and how being grateful for what we have right now um, can make us happy. Um, I recently read something that suggested that people that really do have um, uh, uh, strong mental illnesses as opposed to just mental health issues um, sometimes struggle with gratitude because it, it's a time where you reflect on the day and you think about what you're grateful for. Um, but actually for some people that's quite hard because when you're reflecting on the day you start to remember all the, the not so good stuff too. Um, so instead, this is, an, this is another idea. So instead of thinking of three things that you're grateful for, each day find three good things in nature. So is it looking up at the sky? Is it listening to a bird in your garden? Is it just looking at a plant you've got on your windowsill? Is it finding a plant on the side of the road? And if anybody wants to share their three good things in nature today, every day, any day, um, using the hashtag nature's health service, um, Join me because I'm going to try and start today um, by think thinking and noticing um, from all my senses three good things in nature. Save the NHS, both of them. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jenny Lopra. Don't forget, hashtag nature's health service. Hashtag nature's health service, people. All right. Thank you very much. We shall call that a day. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Alternative uses for Rob. <laughs> <laughs>